pi over 8 and pi over 4. Does it help, do you think, to make this little number line on the side? Uh, Michaela, can I share what you said to me earlier today about the two, why doesn't it go, why doesn't it stop at two? Yeah. So I was talking to Michaela and we were doing one where it translated like it started at one and a half and it had to go a distance of two and then she was like, why doesn't it just stop at two because normally it goes zero to two pi and I think I said if you were in a race and you started at mile marker one and a half and they said you had to go two miles, you wouldn't just stop at the two mile marker and say I did it you have to go a distance of two miles. The race has to be two miles. So no matter where you start, you have to add two on there. So it's easy to figure out where you start because that's just that phase shift left or right. And then it's also easy to find the end point because you just add on the period. If I take negative pi over four and add pi over two, I get to the end and then it's halfway and then half of that, half of that. And this gets tough, but you can do it. Okay, now does a sine graph normally start at the center or does it start above? Five graph normally, sine graph normally starts at zero, right? And then it goes up and then down. Okay, and this one isn't negative, so I'm going to start at the center. I'm going to go up to one, back down to the center, down to negative three, and then back to the center. So it goes up and down and up. Okay. How did that feel? It's not so bad when the teacher's doing it? Okay, so how are we feeling? Do we desperately want um, prizes and we want to try the next one yourselves or would you like to just do one more with me? Eyes closed. Close your eyes. Hands up if you want to do it for prize. Okay, just with me? Wait, what? Who wants to do it with just me or, yeah, I lead it. Okay, all right, open your eyes. We're doing it with me. Okay, example two. How about I will give you a little bit of a chance to do it with your partner too? As in like, I'll start you with stuff and then be like, okay, talk to your partner about this part. Sound good? Example two. All right, negative uh, 2 sine of 3x minus pi in parentheses plus 4. All right, we're going to write down our things on the side here. We're going to need to know the amplitude. We're going to need to know the period. We're going to need to know the left-right shift. We're going to need to know the up-down shift. And then we're going to make some tallies. This is what your paper should look like every time, except for, of course, if it's a simple problem where it's like y equals 3 sine x, where it's just, oh, I go up to 3 and down to negative. Like, if it's a simple problem, I wouldn't do this, but when it starts getting to be all these things, I would do this every time. Okay. Somebody help me out. Amplitude. Negative 2. A, does it help to also label these? You okay? Yeah. Period. Uh, no. Period is 2 pi divided by B. 2 pi over 3. Left, right. Right, okay, what, let's look at the left-right thing again. Left-right says we have to take C and divide by B and then think about the opposite direction. So C divided by B is what? Pi over 3. And is it going to move left or right? It's a negative in front of it. Right, it's opposite of what you think. You think negative is left, negative is right. Up and down. Up, how far? Four up. Where's my tally is gonna start?
Yes, pi over 3. It's sh shifting over to the right, pi over 3, but I'm going to write 1 third. We're starting at 1 third. We'll add the pi's later. It's a period of 2 thirds. So if I start at 1 third, and I'm trying to go a distance of 2 thirds, where do I end up? No. Not two holes. Two thirds. One, right? Three thirds? Okay, because two thirds... One third plus two thirds is three thirds or one. Okay, what's halfway between one third and one? Two thirds? And what if you couldn't figure that out? What would you do? You could do this. You could say, all right, well, this distance is two thirds, right? This distance is two-thirds, so this distance must be at one-third, and this distance must be one-third. So if I take one minus one-third, I'll get to two-thirds. Okay, now this one's harder. How do you go halfway between one-third and two-thirds? Sure, you could divide by a half. So if I, I take, or I guess what? It'd be really this distance times a half. So why don't we do this? Why don't we make these into sixths, because that make make it easier. So I'm going to make this into how many six? Two six. This one? Four six. This one? Six six. Okay, this looks a lot easier. What's halfway between two six and four six? Three six, which is? What's halfway between four six and six six? Five six. Okay, now I'm going to put those pi's in there. This is actually pi over 3. This is pi over 2. This is 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, and big old pi. Giant pi. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm drawing my picture now. Let's see, it's going to be up 4, so I'm barely even going to have the x-axis on there. oof -da. Sorry, Jenna. Where am I going to start? Here. What's my first tally? Pi over 3. It just matches the number line we made over there. Running it down, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, uh, what, 5 pi over 6, and pi. This is a good strategy, by the way. Anytime that you can't, and that you're having problems splitting things, if you make it into smaller pieces, like sixths, or if it was in fifths and you made it into tenths, suddenly it'll be really obvious. All right. Where's my center point this time? How high is it lifted again? You don't know? What's the center of the graph? Four. Do you guys see how it's four up? So let's see. One, two, three, four. I'm going to put a dotted line there. There's the center of my graph. And then how high up and how low does it go? Yep. So it goes up to how much? Six and down to... Two. Okay, so I'm going to go up to six at some point, and I'm going to go down to two at some point. My whole graph should be up there. Okay, this is a sine graph, right? Does a sine graph start at one usually or zero? Zero, right in the middle. So it's going to start in the middle right here. Now, am I going to go up to six first or down to two first? Why will I go down to two? Because it's a negative amplitude. And it goes back to the center, and it goes up to the top, and then back to the center. Now, these problems feel intense and complicated, and they are, but they're not that bad if you really take it piece by piece, and I'd be happy to come help you, okay? I'd also like you to stay in your partnership today and work on at least some of this together. Uh, your homework is page 612.
Numbers 9 through 16, 38 through 42, 46, 47, 50 through 53, and 57 and 58. I believe the only differences between yesterday and today are that 46, 47, and 57, 58. So these two are added and those two are added and everything else is the same. Now, let's say that you were here yesterday and your partner wasn't. Then why don't you start on the stuff that you were